right? Getting the black pieces and uh, facing a lot of E4. I like to see that because it really allows us to showcase the power of the Karakhan. And are we going to get the seven moves checkmate against the 1900? Seems a bit tough to believe, but I'm going to go for my Twisted Fantasy and I'm going to go Queen B6. By the way, guys, I have a full video about this, how to get a checkmate in seven moves. You've probably already seen it. Been doing pretty well, but it's really, it works below. 1700 rapids on chess.com. It works all the time. <laughs> Just play this line and idea is to try to exploit this weak diagonal against the fantasy. I'm definitely quite familiar with the fantasy myself because I have made a chessable course on it, but here white has to know this precise reaction with knight c3, bishop c5, knight a4. If they don't know that, they are in trouble. If they know it, still the game is not easy, but if they go out like ed5 now, which is like so tempting, just, you know, this is like a hanging pawn, basically. Okay, so he plays knight c3 and now the key move is knight a4. He definitely spends some time here, maybe checking the opening book. I don't know. Hope he's got my course at least. And now c3, this is the best move. So, um... We simply have to go bishop takes on g1. Checking him on f2 looks very tempting, but it's simply bad, so do not try that. And uh, now we're just going for this position. By the way, in case you're wondering whether this line is playing only for the trap or if it's any good if they play what white is doing, this line is very playable, okay? Like, it was played by uh, Firuzia's black. There's a pretty stem game between Wei Yi and Firuzia where... White was actually winning. Okay, this is not the optimal move. I remember recommending bishop f4, I believe, in my chessable course. Um, fe4, I think just queen e5 should be pretty straightforward for black. Hitting both pawns. And yeah, as I was saying, there is this stem game between Wei Yi and Ali Reza Firuzia where Wei Yi was actually winning. I mean, Wei Yi is a god. Like, to be honest, I don't know why we don't get to see Wei Yi more often. I really thought that uh, you know, Wei Yi is somebody that could really challenge Magnus or he's not going to be able to be challenged anymore, but because <laughs> he's like not going to be playing in the title, but, uh, you know, like really big contender for like the world crown. I don't know if you guys are like even familiar who Wei Yi is because he played like so few games at the top level, but he was like 27 at 16. Really strong Chinese player. Hey, Slice Serve. Welcome to the stream. How are you? Hope work is going well. So now I'm really considering this, but the problem is Queen G7. So I think that's no good. And also entering this endgame is not great. I just prefer Knight D7. Solidifying situation in the center. And uh, I have six castle. Never develop and win? What do you mean? I I'm having really decent development in this game, don't I? <laughs> Just got up, showered, breakfast, and work next, but I saw world's funniest chess player streaming. Wait, is uh, Levi Rosman live? <laughs> what are you doing here? Taking h2 wins the rook, yes, but he was winning my rook also, and then my king is weaker than he is, because he's got this bishop that's making it really safe, so I didn't like that. So he just plays bishop e3, now knight f6, hitting e4, now maybe this is a threat, so he may be looking forward to take, we take with a knight with like a pretty solid position. He's got the isolated pawn, I think this is definitely a walk in the park, considering that we had to know like seven moves up against the fantasy. It was like such a such a weird opening, isn't it? Not easy to understand. But now after knight c5, I think we have easy way to play this. Don't take with a knight because your queen hangs. So pay attention to that. But you can just go queen c5, queen takes, knight takes, bishop takes, and then collect free pawn. That's one thing. Queen h2, definitely way too greedy here. Do not go this greedy. Let's go for the solid line. So here, I'm going to take, we're going to take, white is going to have some compensation, okay? It's not over. They've got the bishop pair. Bishop pair, open position. 
definitely still not easy, okay? There's this saying that uh, I actually had one of my students recently asking me, like, you hear it all the time, like, what's up with the bishop pair? Like, are they strong? Why, why are they so strong? Why is everybody, <laughs> like, uh, complimenting the bishop pair? And there's usually this saying that goes, uh, if you're having the bishop pair in an open position, it is usually worth a pawn, or it feels like you're up a pawn. It's how strong the bishop pair it is. So you can see here, struggling to castle. Hopefully we can go long next. If he goes long castle, I was hoping there could be ideas like bishop a2, but not sure. Bishop a2, rook e1 has to be covered. f5, bishop d3, maybe we can castle. a2 definitely... Pretty risky decision. I could just play rook d8, you know, idea to trade a pair of rooks. And if he moves the rook away, I mean, just go king d7, king c8. I mean, he doesn't have, like, other move, to be honest, so that makes less sense, what I just said. So, you could ignore me on that, but, uh, okay, how do we... How do we do this? Rook d8 just feels like a move. You know, it's it's hard to explain it, but this is as, as good as the commentary gets. Rook d8 feels like a move here. And, okay, bishop d3, knight f2. Maybe winning. Getting both pieces and winning exchange. And after rook takes, king takes, I think we're safe because the king will be able to reach safety, bring the last piece into the game. Because the only issue that we have is this bishop is cutting away f8, not allowing us to... Uh, to castle and rook e1 hitting the knight and I could go back but how about we go to d6 so we can castle would that be so weird do you guys mind if we get weird for a second okay I'm gonna go knight d6 okay it's not the most natural square for the knight, I agree, but if it gets the job done, castling rook e8, I'm gonna declare myself uh, happy for a second, not more, but <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. So, we can castle, but then rook to d1, pinning. What's up with that pin? I have bishop to d5. Now, only critical move could be takes and c4. I think we're in trouble. So castling, maybe dropping exchange, as far as I can see. So castling, not right. Could be time. King d7, king c7, and it is what it is, but we finished development, so we should be chilling. It's just king c7, and we managed to castle, okay? We managed to coordinate, and now it should be relatively easy. Can we say that? I feel like whenever we say that, we just lose on the very next move. Maybe b6, stopping bishop c5, threatening this. b6 is definitely not a move that I love making, because it's weakening uh, c6 and potentially making g2 bishop more powerful, but it felt like a uh, nice move to, you okay, know, restricting his bishop that way and the rook and preparing... Uh, that to say bishop uh, there, but never mind, I guess. Okay, bishop f5, preparing to exchange rooks, or bishop e4, just uh, centralizing. Okay, need to speed up, guys. I have absolutely no time on the clock. Just need to make quick moves. Okay, that's easy. Right. Big threat. Okay, endgame should be relatively straightforward. Okay, uh, shit. Yes, straight forward, he said. That's right. Oh, he can just take my pawn, that was not very clever. Oh, he allowed that, that was a mistake. Okay, now we trade. Oh, this fucker. <laughs> he won't let me. Okay, now it's Zugzwang.
All right, never in doubt. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think uh, what I was saying a little bit earlier that uh, the bishop pair is uh, compensating pretty, pretty nicely for the pawn. It's kind of true, but okay, curious about the game review on this one. I feel like until this point, I was super happy with uh, what we did. Like king c7, I think he's just now... Uh, okay, I should play knight c4. Why am I not doing that? Why am I playing like a clown? Oh, I missed knight b2 trick. Yeah, I should have gone for that, of course. I just stopped on bishop c5, but there is knight b2 and you just win. That's the only thing I could have done better in this game. The rest was okay. Okay, so 86 as a guess. Let's check the game review. It's a 70 moves one. I think it was a draw if he kept shouldering me at the end, by the way. We only got an 81. So yeah, it was indeed a dead draw if he kept shouldering. So F4 was a mistake because he could win the pawn. And okay, then it was winning, but now... Oh no, it's not a draw. What am I saying? Yeah, okay, he's just in Zugzwang. I just had no time to figure it out, but eventually... This end game is like an easy win. So the only mistake was that I played f4 a bit too early. I should have started king d6. And now the problem is, I was thinking whenever he gets uh, to win my pawn, we could go onto the other side, but we're not in time. So this just wins the pawn and it's an easy draw. Um, I mean, I could still try f3, I guess, and uh, look for this end game. King e5, threatening this, king e3, and then try to, you know, like... To these kind of like subtle moves, but it should be should be a draw still. All right, we're getting the black pieces and we're facing almost uh, two thousand rated opponents. So little does he know. <laughs> we're okay going back into the Karo Khan. He tried this, I think. Maybe Magnus tried this gambit against Vichy once, but I'm like, we're chilling. We could be getting this from the Karo Khan, so. We can just, uh, you know, avoid it and play normal. Just knight c6 and bishop b5. Now, this check is pretty precise, okay? You don't have to, like, really remember it. Like, bishop g4 is fine, but this is a really nice move to force knight c3, which is a bit of a mistake. I mean, not a mistake, but a misplaced knight. So, just gonna defend this. Oh, I did mistake now. I should have started bishop g4. And then in case of bishop d2, wait, how am I supposed to play this? And then on bishop d2, I think there is rook c8, that's the theory. I think I did uh, a bit of an inaccuracy now, but okay, let's see, bishop d7. Bishop d2, rook c8 has to be played because there is this trick, like bishop d2, e6, there was knight d5. So queen b5, knight c7. So we cannot do that. Would you consider d5 a necessary move to call it a Karo Khan? Yes, why not? <laughs> What's wrong with d5? Um, just e6, bishop e7. I mean, we got a little bit of a dodgy setup compared to like what we'd normally get. Uh, I just forgot that I'm supposed to start with bishop d4 there. Uh, but... Um, after, I mean, in this position after like 25, 93, I think bishop g4 was the move. And then bishop d2, rook c8, important uh, detail. But we just get into this kind of typical structure where I'm even gonna take the time and start with this so we can take with the rook. And just bishop e7 castle. When I play players with these ratings, I kind of slam in my moves and hope for the best, but you really show how careful you have to be against these players. Especially in the opening, that's where a lot of people tend to rush, and you simply don't realize how important your opening actually is. You're like, okay, let me just develop and figure it out later, but if you don't develop optimally, then 
doesn't matter like how good of a player you are if your position is just shit. So it's much better to start with a good position and then figure it out. If you uh, understand where I'm trying to go with this, so just avoiding these now. The C file is like super weak. Okay, it's important, like, to be honest, most important thing is just to avoid losing by force, which is what I had in mind in this game. Like, uh, Queen A5 was a little bit of, a, of an unnecessary move. It's, like, super good if you remember how to follow it up with Bishop G4 because you misplace his knight, but you can also play Bishop G4. It's, like, the easier line, and uh, uh, what I think I recommend in my upcoming course on... Uh, just about which is going to be about uh, the Scandi Gambit, but it's also covering the Karo Khan because they can just play d4 and I'm dealing with those position in great depth as well. So, okay, we see 92, just finish development. Even in uh, end game and middle games, I'm very careful. Well, usually in end games, I don't have time. <laughs> so it's probably only middle game. And... Uh, it's just, you know, for me, I'm trying to keep control over the position. If I can sort of keep an eye on what the main pawn breaks are, what things could potentially be dangerous for me, I'm going to have a very easy time because I just have games like this where I have a long-term advantage simply because this is a weak pawn on c3. It's a backward pawn that it's just going to be weak. As long as I'm avoiding any silly tricks... I should definitely have an easy push. So, knowing that, I'm just trying to... Yeah, you know, as long as there's nothing crazy going on, I should have an easy time uh, pressing in, in a lot, uh, in a long game. So, definitely not paying attention to your opponent's threats can backfire pretty pretty badly. And... It's like even worse when you have positions that are so nice as this one, for instance, where he literally has no play and we are the one to just keep pressing and press forever. Like these positions, worst case scenario, you should make a draw if you like miss the win. Okay, I think doubling up is making quite some sense here since there are no other open files and this is a target. Yes, the knight protects it pretty well, but... Um, Okay, even e5 at some point is not that stupid, but I think uh, I'd prefer a more maneuvering game. So, uh, okay, how do we get the knight around c4? That would be the next step. So this knight is not placed so well. Maybe just knight c6. Now, this could actually be hinting more towards e5 as well, but also could play like knight b8. Okay, queen g5 I think is just nice to... Kick the queen away. Maybe then e5 is pretty strong. Okay, he goes for the end game. As I uh, already told you, the end games are just uh, gonna be a walk in the park generally. So I'm gonna do knight b8, which is maybe not optimal, but I'm hinting towards uh, c4. So he could have tried a4, a5 if he was trickier, but. I have to say, I kind of counted on the fact that he wouldn't spot this idea. Just because uh, I don't have that much time on the clock to come up with such an optimal plan. But now we get the knight to d6. Start maneuvering. We've got a weak pawn on c3, which should generally give us very good winning chances. He's going to get a knight to d3, but then b6 is important. So knight c5. He has knight e5, but we're going to be able to kick away uh, that knight. Um, now, uh, I have a move such as knight b5, and this is funny because it looks like it's attacking a3, he's gonna do a4, but then I'm gonna go knight a3 anyway, because I'm like trapping his exchange, which is very easy to miss. So he plays that move, but now uh, we simply have knight c3. And rook c1, we have brilliant move knight b1. Look at that. Knight b1 is, uh, so nice. Look at these guys. So we can do knight b1, trade everything, and uh, pick up a3. So he cannot take this because of the rook. And yeah, just trade knight a3, win another pawn. Just a very nice uh, 
and precise conversion. Okay, I mean, okay, winning another point. So this was not like a must to find, like the position was still winnable in uh, other ways, but it's even nicer when you are able to find these kind of like precise things. So winning another pawn, you just need to not allow some kind of weird can't play with his B pawn, which I don't think should happen. So, um, yeah, we can just start pushing the past pawn. Oh, he goes knight B5. Yeah, maybe I should pay attention to these kind of things, but I mean, A5 is now an easy move, just getting rid of last pawn, and this is easy win now. I just need to play a little bit faster, go G5. He's going to waste a lot of time trying to win the um, A5 pawn, and in the meantime, I'll just uh, start pushing. If knight B7, use this pawn as a distraction for him. Still, it's gonna take him quite some time to uh, to win it. I'm not like trying to queen with that pawn, but I'm like trying to deflect his pieces, if that makes any sense. And pick up another one, and then we get a queen. Okay, just um, even nicer, I believe, to... I'm shouldering his king and uh, picking up f3 next. Pushing h2, he's gonna do knight f1 only move, and then we have h2, forcing him to stack the knight. And we're just gonna get these nice pawns marching together. And we can even promote the rook. So we get a pretty nice kind of Hikaru like uh, checkmate to this game. So, okay, I'm curious about the game review. Um, let me see how much uh, did we did we score. Mm. Quick interruption. If you're really enjoying this kind of content, please make sure to hit the like button because that uh, really helps the algorithm push the video to more people. And just wanted to let you know that I have created a Discord server that you can join with members of uh, this channel. So if you're looking for uh, people that are in a similar rating range to yours, you can discuss with them, try to arrange uh, training games, hang out with people with uh, similar interests, share memes, or maybe simply want to be part of this community. I will post the link in the description. And if you haven't picked up your London System course yet, it is on a sale for the month of December. And if you're having any questions about it, you have nothing to lose. You can get your money back in 30 days guaranteed, no questions asked. So that's pretty much what I had to say. Now I'll just uh, let you back with the video. Scored an 89, no brilliant moves, but I think this was, uh, this one actually played out quite, um, quite nicely with like the whole, uh, maneuvering. So you can clearly see the, the limitations of these players. And I'm not like trying to be mean about like the 2000s in Blitz, but the move that's for sure losing him the game is Queen G3. Yeah. With this move, you're never really hoping for more than, what, me missing the win at some point. You get into an endgame where you have a weak pawn and your opponent doesn't. As simple as that. So just the mindset was like really, was really bad. So the only chance that white has in these kind of games is create some kind of counterplay. I don't know, like just go H4, G4, try to somehow push these pawns. It shouldn't really work, you know, but um, his only chance is with queens on the board. And yeah, I definitely feel like going for the end game is a big mistake. Maybe I'm wrong, okay? Maybe that was not so bad here, but that's just how I see it. So uh, yeah, computer only only mentioned by computer is to go h5 and not allow g4 which i kind of agree to now if he plays g4 maybe he gets potentially some play but i still think that's not enough to compensate for like such a weak pawn but h5 definitely a nice move that i missed there i was just kind of too zoned in on this knight b8 and for him it was critical to play this a5 i think now i would have probably found h5 and 
play on this position, maneuver the other knight around c4. Would still slightly better game. Can I show the correct move order after queen a5? So yes, the correct move order is bishop g4. And in case of h3, it's bishop takes, queen takes, e6, and bishop d2. Important not to play knight f6, which is blunder, but to go rook c8, I think. Yeah, rook c8 best move. This is pretty sure it was given maybe in Lamy's course, or I don't know where I'm like found this. So now 95, the point is um, c7 is covered. And after rook c8, we get like normal game, bishop e7 castle, and um, yeah, it's just uh, better for black already. So the main point is not to go knight f6 because it allows typical trick, you know, queen b5, knight c7. So that's why it's important to have the rook covering this. But okay, there's like no need to begin with this like queen a5 check. Bishop g4 could be even easier to deal with um, black setup. But I wanted to go for like the the better approach. It's just that I forgot to throw in bishop g4 and now it clearly has 95. And the position is a little bit iffy, okay? It was not like, I was not like 100% sure what was going on. But after we get to finish development, it clearly should be a very good position. So... I think the wrist was pretty simple. We just got the other knight around, b6 covering c5, and now knight b5 is a very nice move, showcasing the fact that after a4, knight e3, we're just winning the exchange. So, he's trapped, and now we simply win a pawn. And, okay, besides uh, knight c3, I had knight d4 stronger move, which I'm kind of kicking myself for not seeing, but I just saw this rook ac1, knight b1 that was too aesthetic. Not to go for, and uh, that's why I guess I missed that. Or at least I like to use these kind of excuses. So the end game was pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, despite a bit of a dodgy opening, uh, still I hope it uh, ended up being somewhat instructive. All right, facing a two thousand rated opponent, gonna be going for the normal Karo Khan and. Uh, Let's see what he has in mind against our c5, the Bodvinic Hars variation. And yeah, it's a line with bishop to d3, a bit of a gamble. This is interesting to see. I don't think it's a great line. It is interesting against the French, but after we get the bishop out, I think we should definitely be quite all right. Definitely feels like that to me. Now he's going to try like a3, b4. This is usually the plan for them, but I feel like e5 is a little bit weaker than usual. Just getting the knight to g6, he cannot recap. And after this, putting up the h5 should definitely be the way to go. Now taking feels reasonable again. And after that, I think very annoying for my opponent is instead of the normal bishop e7, just to go bishop b4. Winning a tempo against the rook because there is no c3 since that simply allows us to take. And now, I think I've got knight e5 as a move. And then simply knight back and we're taking that pawn, which should be pretty good, you know. Uh, yeah, just going for that. Queen e2 will be played and then just knight back. Stopping queen b5 check and uh, getting the knife to... A safe uh, place. Okay, against this move. Yeah, same. Knight back. If it takes, we can just exchange and simply gonna be up a pawn. Considering a move such as queen h4 as well now. Just kind of trying to get rid of the queens and um, potentially getting, getting an easier game with the extra pawn. Queen h4, queen c7, could that be annoying? I mean, just uh, knight takes on d4, I don't believe in such things. So I think queen h4 just forcing queens off should be pretty nice. Even though, like, knight takes on d4 is perfectly fine. I'm just more of a fan of this move for the sake of simplicity. Now knight c6, simply queen g3, and then uh, pick up the knight. And okay, queen e3, I thought there should be bishop c5. Very annoying pin. Maybe knight d4, rook d4. And uh, we have to play queen e7, and maybe that's not so great. 
because it's uh, not so nice to retreat. But bishop c5, c3 should definitely be very safe after, let's say, like bishop takes on d4 and he's gonna have that target forever. So, that seems like pretty easy and straightforward to me. Taking with the bishop because uh, we keep good knight on c6 against bad pawn. We don't even need to like hope for any kind of attack, just get castle to rook c8. Still tricky for him to deal with uh, that pawn and yeah, bringing rook to the open file. Cannot go wrong with that. He's hitting my rook, so just gonna perhaps play to e8 now. We may be having some ideas. Like, uh, like e5. It's not like really main thing in this position maybe it would have been even better to play rook d8 just to have queen e4 in store but like black has a bunch of reasonable moves usually in these positions so uh okay he plays rook c8 simply i mean rook c1 how do we make progress we just need to exchange rooks so can we just play knight e7 I guess knight e7, not so bad, preparing knight f5 and g3, queen back to f6. I'm not really loving my technique in like the last couple of moves. Okay, what is that move that's allowing knight f5? I'm not sure what plan of the opponent is because this looks very loose. Now f6 has got like what, queen h2 only move? Barely surviving. Also, I could do queen g5, hitting the rook. Hmm. Okay, which one do we begin with? So queen g5, he can take and then play g4, but then there is rook c1. Okay, I think I like this still. g4 even knight h4 there is a move queen h6 yes queen h6 is also something that i considered yeah okay do i just go for this he's gonna have like f3 move i saw rook c1 as well i guess this is simplest i'm just gonna be like oh no my queen for a second but maybe he doesn't have to take the knight Yeah, maybe like queen c3 would be a better move for him. Now I wanted to do this. Trade and then g5. Support a knight. Stopping bishop f4 ideas and defending. Okay, not so clear how we make progress. Just f6. He's not really like having a threat. Maybe queen d1. Bishop g5. Uh, knight f3 is the plan. He's got a check but then king h7. I could have also played f6. Perhaps would have been easier. Among other things, I could be playing queen f3 next. But maybe bishop g5. So Should be a little careful with that. I could start with f6. Wait, so queen f3, what's going on? Okay, b6, just hit the bishop. Yes, we're low on time, I agree. Let's speed up. I'm just gonna take d4 next. And then we're just gonna try to play fast. Queen e4. Okay, bishop e5, queen e5 would be a nice finale. Guess he's not gonna fall for that, will he? Bishop b8 a6. Q4. 
Alex is a world class bullet player. I wouldn't go uh wouldn't go this far <laughs> to say that. But I'll need to get my pawns on the light squares and we're gonna be pretty safe. Okay, now just exchange queens and that should be easy. Funny thing is he almost has no moves. Oopsies, I fucked up. Might have accidentally fucked up. <laughs> My mouse dropped. <laughs> ah, this is so bad. Oh, I feel bad for this. This shouldn't have happened. Uh. <laughs> and like an easy pre moving as well. Okay, I mean. I kind of deserve it for playing it this low, but um, this means we get more games, so <laughs> go for the next one. Personally prefer the car, but uh can see the appeal of French. I mean, of course you can see that. I mean, imagine it like a, like a French girl with like an accent, yeah? You'd, you'd think of trying that at least once, you know? <laughs> I played like French a few games in my life, but then had to quit. But that's why we're here playing the Caro. So yeah, again, just saying for the for the video for those that are, are wondering uh, when the Caro Con course is coming out. We actually, I mean, I signed up for a Caro course. That should be part of the new uh, chessable series of the hundred line uh, repertoires, which. Um, yeah, it's going to be out in April next year is expected. So one of the lines that I'm going to, I'm thinking to give is queen c to h6. And the opponent playing short castle, I don't mind. I'm just going to get my knight to f8 and we're basically chilling. Playing it with a knight on e2, which is a thing, but, um, yeah, I think no rook e2 is fine. I know like... Sometimes it's not, but I don't see any problems with it. So I think I'm just going to go for that move. That's like a typical uh, tactic here. Sometimes this doesn't work as I'm underdeveloped, but now I think we just get two minors for uh, for the rook because there are no tricks since the knight like covers h7. So uh, yeah, usually queen e4 was the tactic here to win, but that's with the knight on d7, let's say. So with the knight on f8, we're just chilling. Just want a nice little... Uh, yeah, nice little two minors for the rook. Yo, Mr. Birdfish, my guy from Austin, how are you? How is my favorite lawyer? <laughs> uh, all right, we see F4. How are we going to deal with this? I feel like we should try to fight for the open file, but... Also seems tempting to play some kind of bishop move. Wait, I think I might have got something for you guys. I think f5 is pretty solid. And then... Kind of the goal of this is to... Well, I want to stop bishop, uh, like... I mean, queen e8 first. I'm going to get my bishop here. And I want to get, like, these knight around. Cb3. Hmm. Okay, so I just want to get my knight around f6 now. That's like part of the plan. Made the French girl, wonderful thing. Without it, I would have lost uh, sight of so many opportunities for my self-improvement. Okay, but tell us what happened. Did you learn how to cook uh, baguettes or croissants or... 
<laughs> How is that like self uh, development going? What specifically have you learned? Did you learn how to play French Depends? You can go a little bit more in depth, if possible. Okay, just gonna get my knight there as I wanted. French toast and French fries makes sense. Definitely worth marrying for that. Going G6. Uh, all right, rook AD1. So this game is like easily winnable if I like keep, uh, I mean, if I stop reading the chat and focus on the actual moves. So I'm going to go for a double attack here, hitting both the uh, rook and the D4 pawn. I'm going to take it with check because of the check. I'm not uh, afraid of the discoveries. So yeah, opponent just resigns and I think we basically play the perfect game. It's just that he made a pretty big mistake there. Playing, um, yeah, like um, what it was, bishop f4. Wait, I don't have unlimited? I just spent my money on a membership and now I don't have unlimited? What is wrong with this? Bro, I feel scammed. We need diamond. Holy. Wow. Am I an I am? Yes, I am. As written on the screen. <laughs> All right, guys. Sorry. I'm not going to be, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to be, you know. I think we already made one purchase to chess.com today. I'm not like that generous, okay? I think we'll just have to close the stream now and... Uh, yeah. Uh, wait till uh, we get more reviews and then we <laughs> play more games. Um, only plot is unlimited game review. Oh, I didn't know that. Now I know. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. Don't title players get free? Well, this is not my main account, as you can tell. Uh, Victory Music. All right, guys, just because we're about to end the stream, I'm going to give you the victory music. You, you, you got me with that. They overlooked me. They called me a pawn. I have 11k uh, okay, uh, Alex Bans at channel points. Will this help me impress a French girl? <laughs> oh, by the way, thank you for the prime. The guy with a French wife. Appreciate it. Say hi to your wife from me. Very much appreciate it. Think, think of me as replaceable. <laughs> Free weakness. Mm. Think of me as worthless. Chess is much better, but you can do speedruns on leeches because leeches will uh, accurately rate you. Had dreams to become a queen. Within like 10 but games. Sometimes makes more sense. Uh, I'm not sure about like the accurately part so like much, but yeah, I get that. I wanted to watch. I have never seen your streams. Well, uh. The thing is, I was not about to like stream uh, for so long, anyways, because it's like 3 a.m. I just wanted to uh, get to touch 2,000, so we barely did that today. Just to highlight, last mistake of my opponent was uh, Bishop F4 there. Uh, that's just like straight up losing. 